Hello, my name is John Liu, Flow Ninja, and today I have a video about using Flow or Power Automate to schedule a Microsoft Teams meeting with anyone, anytime. And we're going to call Microsoft Teams via Microsoft Graph. Now we're going to create a flow, and this is a very simple one. We're going to create uh, just a menu trigger. And in the menu trigger, we're going to ask for a user's email. So we're going to ask for a parameter called email address. So this is when you press a button, it will ask for email address and you can type one in. Okay, so there's that. So we want to call Microsoft Graph. The action we're looking for is not available yet in any of the out of the box actions. So we will call Microsoft Graph directly. And before we um, build any more flows, we need to kind of figure out what's What's the Microsoft Graph uh, API to call and then what JSON to send through to this API. So if we quickly go and search for uh, Microsoft Graph and in this case, we're trying to create event, uh, search for events, you end up usually probably on this page, the event resource type. So this is uh, a event object is under calendars in uh, Microsoft Graph. You can see here. And if we quickly look at say the create event method, if we scroll down, we will see uh, a bunch of examples. If we scroll up and have a look at the event object. Yeah, yeah. So the event object has properties. And you will see uh, online meeting URL. But it says that this is a read-only URL. So it's not a value that we can set. Um, the way to create a Teams meeting, uh, so, so if we create just an event here, we create a calendar event. But if we want to create a Teams meeting, we actually have to call the beta API. So if we go over here and select beta, and uh, we're still on events, but if we scroll down now and we can have a look, oh, in addition to the uh, meeting URL, there is an uh, online meeting, online meeting provider, and then there is another property called is online meeting. And if we look at the create event here, and let's go and see some examples. I think one of the examples is actually an online event. What is it? Example five. You see, create enable a meeting as an online meeting. So we need to call uh, Microsoft Graph beta me events. Uh, so that will post it to my uh, time zone. Um, and then uh, what do we need to do? We need uh, pretty much this JSON message. So we need a time, the attendee of who's required. So it should be me and the other person. Um, and then uh, right at the end, see here, we need these three. So we need to, uh, that allows the, um, uh, that allows someone to propose a new time. And then we need to set this is online meetings true and select a, team, a meeting provider. And we'll use Teams, uh, Microsoft Teams, or here Teams for Business. So we can copy pretty much this whole thing. Go over to here and uh, let's just put this quickly into, we will quickly put this into a Compose action first. Compose is very easy to use. Uh, so we need pretty much this whole JSON. Now, um we what do we need to do so and then and then one more step we're going to actually call microsoft graph and to call microsoft graph within flow the easiest one is we use a method called info with azure ad there is an action called http with azure ad and then there is an invoke http request now the first time you create this you're going to get a i have several but the first time you create this, you're going to get a blank one that kind of looks like this. Okay, so what you need to do is type HTTPS graph.microsoft.com. You basically need to copy and paste that twice. And then sign in, and then you'll get a dialog that pops up that says, Hey, we want to authenticate you to talk to Microsoft Graph. Who do you want to use? So this will basically grant Microsoft Flow. This will grant this connection ability to call Microsoft Graph on your behalf. Info with Azure AD is a, a premium action. So this is this flow is a premium flow. Now we need to do a post. I am using the new uh, experimental. So 
I'm using the experimental feature, which is a bit nicer on several the several of the um, user interface. Now let's just take this URL, put that in here. Um, we do need content type. Yeah. We don't really need to prefer a type. So let me just trim that. So that is now a proper JSON, and we need the body of the JSON here. Uh, just select the output. That's the JSON from this compose. It's going to go right in here. So let's tuck that in, and then uh, let's have a look at this. Now, we want this time to start time. Let's just do right now. So let's do, uh, let's insert a time, and we want the. Um, let's just do the current timestamp. Yeah, that's good. So the current timestamp, that's uh, something from the current trigger. Let's do something like an expression at uh, minutes. And we're going to do the current timestamp again. Plus, uh, let's say 30 minutes. Yeah, and we're just going to do that. Okay, so that is an expression of add minutes. We're going to add 30 minutes to the time of clicking the button. And these times from flow are always UTC. So let's just make them all UTC. UTC. Okay, and then uh, we want a few more things. We want this to be the email. Um, we ask for email. And we don't, we probably don't need this name. We didn't really ask for the person's name, so. Oh. And uh, let's get one more person. So copy the identity, comma. Paste it again, and this time we want uh, us, we want the person that's uh, the user's email, so the, the person that is running this button. Uh, double check, that's looking all pretty good. And if we just save that, oh, you should give it a nice name. Button to me, John, now. And from now, from here, we can basically run a test. So run the test, uh, start. First time it will ask, okay, we want to use this connection, yes. Okay, so this is the flow button. The flow button is asking for um, one email address. We are going to ask our buddy Gandalf. Gandalf, please. Uh, we need to have a meeting. So let's have a look at did that work? It's created the JSON and then uh, it's gone and called the HTTP. It's created HTTP. And uh, if I scroll down here and look at this JSON, you will see oh, okay, it's created the meeting between uh, me, the organizer is me, and then uh, Gandel. In fact, the uh, meeting appointment just popped in. And there's a Microsoft Teams meeting. If I click this, it will launch in my Windows calendar, which is my default client. And you will see uh, there's a meeting. Excellent. Hmm. Bit of a mystery there. Have a quick look. What's going on? Oh, the current user seem to have been this weird uh, value. So the current user was encoded in a weird value. If I have a look at here, um, the, where is the current user? 
current user email and for some reason I picked up the current user email encoded that seems to be this rubbish so I really just want the current user email which is that one so if I quickly pop back here have a quick fix what's going on yeah see how it's using the encoded encoded well wow, that's annoying so um that's a lot difficult to type that so we want uh, basically the current user email but instead of the encoded on the encoded I don't know why he thinks that encoded is necessary we're just going to repair that okay we want the normal email so I kind of quickly show you how I debug that and why did I have that strange, strange code. Um, so let's do that again. Let's do, let's save it. And we're just going to rerun it because the previous signal is good enough. Let's just do that again. Now there are a lot of places you could take this. You could have a Microsoft form uh, in the front that asks for a user's email and you can publish that form publicly. So when uh, someone that wants to contact you types in um, their email address, you could check your calendar in the flow, find a free spot, and set up an invitation. Now the email address, uh, so this is the second time it's done correctly, the organizer and Gandalf, there's no funny email. Okay, you can see the time is exactly 3.30, 10.33, which was earlier when I clicked the button, for exactly 30 minutes. Uh, the link will start at Microsoft Teams meeting. Um, yeah, what else? What else is there? So yeah, so back on the Microsoft, you can use Microsoft Forms and then find the free spot in your time and then send the email address. In fact, I would like to show you, you could, um, you could even, uh, let's see, if I just quickly run a test again, run a new test. I wanted to show that you could even send email to people that are outside of the organization. It's not just limited to your own uh, colleagues. So let's have a look at that. So we could basically type John Liu at Outlook.com. That's totally just an external account. It's not even an Office 365 account. We can run the flow anyway. And um, the flow will create a meeting. John do now let me show my the person could just click this link uh, no, open and just join on the web yeah so this is the anonymous John Liu he could join it from the screen let me cancel these because I'm recording um, so in the web experience John Liu at outlook.com could easily join this meeting does not need to uh, download or even sign in with any kind of Office 365 account. We'll just start the meeting. Okay, uh, that was a quick flow to show you how you can create Teams meeting invitations on demand. You can hook it up to any kind of workflow process. Uh, you can hook it up to your app. So you could make this a, a web service link that your um, JavaScript apps could call. Uh, and that is uh, part of the magic of flow and uh, I'll end here subscribe to my channel and I'll see you soon. Bye